used to believe that the only reason that anyone would ever become a vegan was just simply for the fact that they believe in animal rights. But the truth is that I found myself going down quite a different path in becoming a vegan. And although I don't mind animals, in fact, this is my cat Jasper. I mind him probably more than any other animal because although we're buddies, he is irritating as, all, as you could possibly imagine any animal being. So, since animal rights wasn't my primary reason in becoming a vegan, you might ask yourself, well then why did you become a vegan? And there was a mixture of a lot of reasons. I began to eliminate food choices, and uh, primarily due to health. I mean, I didn't have bad health, but um, as more and more studies came out, I found ways to improve my health. And after a while, I found myself being a vegan. Um, and, but there were a mixture of other sort of things, too. The first thing that I eliminated from my diet was milk. Uh, you can check out more information about why not to drink milk at notmilk.com, uh, among with, uh, a, you know, a, a, in addition to what you might find in the China study by T. Colin Campbell, or uh, information you might receive from doctors like Dr. John McDougall. So milk was the first thing that I said to go. Uh, another reason that I considered not drinking milk was in the Ar Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 1963 movie, I think, or 62, Pumping Iron. He's quoted as saying, uh, when asked, you know, do you, drink, do you drink skim milk? He said, no, I don't drink milk. Milk's for babies. Good quote. Uh, the next reason, the next thing that I ended up common eliminating from my diet was meat. And that actually did have largely to do, actually I didn't completely eliminate meat at first. Um, the first thing that I started to do was take out anything that was made in a factory. Uh, many of you that follow uh, vegan athletes might follow Frank Madrano. And he made a video that I saw uh, probably, well probably about right about the time it came out, uh, but I think that was probably last um, November, October, November of 2011. And when I saw that, it had all these pictures of factory farmed animals. And it was really one of the first times that I had seen factory farming or had really given it much consideration. And although I wasn't opposed to eating animals at the time, uh, I definitely didn't want to eat animals that had been treated cruelly throughout their whole life. Um, for quite a few years, I had actually eaten, eaten a kosher diet, um, partially due to um, religious reasons. But um, I, one of the teachings in the Torah in regards to eating kosher is that you cannot disrespect the life of an animal. You can't take an animal that's been treated cruelly and, and abused its entire life and then sit down in good conscience and be obedient to God eating that animal. Um, you know, and following those laws, uh, you are allowed to eat animals, um, but they have to be, uh, that to be kosher, they have to have been not only slaughtered in the proper um, context, but they have to have been, you know, you have to honor the life. And the teachings that I received was that you cannot honor the life of an animal that's been mistreated its whole life. Uh, so then the next thing that I decided to do after eliminating milk was I wanted to take a more ethical stance in meat eating. So I wanted to be a, uh, ethical, what I thought was an ethical meat eater at the time. And so I stopped eating anything that um, hadn't been raised wild per se, so um, many, much of my family and people that I work around, this is what cats do. They stick their face up in your butt. This is what, this is what they're good for. They're good for sticking their butts in your face. That's about it. But, uh, I work with a lot of people at the time that they were really big into hunting. Uh, I was, uh, I, I would fish and things like that at the time. So I started only eating wild-caught meats. Uh, I would eat eggs, but only eggs that had been raised on uh, farms uh, around me here where I live in Ohio. So 
um, that was the first big step I took. Well, I found myself at certain times, uh, you know, in, in the short period of time that I did that, uh, it was probably about a month or so, um, you know, I found that, you know, I, I was able to get enough meat from certain people to last maybe a week or so. Um, I might catch a fish, which would last one mil. <laughs> And, or well, not one mil, like two mils. And then, uh, so I limited it down to eggs, and that was about it. So I started saying, you know, I'm pretty much a vegetarian. I, I should do some more research into what I should be eating if I'm gonna keep a vegetarian diet. Well, as I began looking up, you know, this information, uh, I, I, I heard of like raw food diets, and people were talking about the, you know, the great health that they had, they had seen on raw food diets. And uh, for a very short time, about a week, maybe two, I tried a, um, I tried a high-fat raw vegan diet. Well, then I discovered John McDougall, and uh, he, he was promoting heavily a low-fat vegan diet. Um, which if you've seen John McDougall, you've seen you know exactly what he believes. He pretty much, um, he has one solid message for the most part and uh, he goes on with that message pretty often. And, um, and it's a good message. So if you're gonna have a message and you're only gonna speak one, it might as well be a good one, and I think he does have a good one. Uh, so the, the next thing I did was I just decided to go low-fat, raw vegan. Well, anybody that goes low-fat, high-carb, raw vegan is going to discover 80-10-10. And if you discover 80-10-10, if you do any research, you're going to discover Dorian Riker. And that was kind of how I got immersed in that. I, I started to check out websites like 30bananasaday.com and uh, just made the decision, I'm just going to do this. I didn't, I've gone back and forth between eating some cooked foods, eating no cooked foods, um, and uh, you know, I really had pretty good health on, on all of those, uh, whether it would be um, you know, cooked foods or just raw foods. Uh, I prefer raw foods for a lot of reasons, but I know I'll probably never be 100% raw vegan, absolutely abstaining from all forms of cooked food, but uh, that is kind of, you know, where I go. That's my preference, my first choice. And uh, so that's kind of uh, been my journey. I started that uh, the low-fat raw vegan thing back last December, December of 2011. So I first started to get interested in this probably around September or October of 2011, and then I just went completely all the way in December, and about mid-December, somewhere about. And uh, I've been on it since then, and you know I, I can't really say any but anything but good things about it. So that's my story. Uh, post your comments below. And uh, feel free to share your story if uh, that's kind of been your decision and where you've come to in, uh, in all this. And uh, tag me on this video so I can see what you're up to and your reasons for becoming vegan or whatever you've chosen to do.